Hello Noble Ones, welcome back to my channel. This is the Metatron speaking. Now, today's topic is a rather exceptional topic, I reckon, because it doesn't only to have to do with historical education, as we always do, but it actually ranges from historical and cultural education, meaning uh, ancient Norse mythology, all the way to linguistics, namely Germanic philology and etymology. Now that's a lot of information to talk about. So without further ado, let's get to it. A very quick note before starting the video. I have recently found a very interesting channel dealing with um, sword techniques, long sword and many other things uh, that I think you should have a look at. The name of the channel is London Long Sword. Now I have been watching quite a lot of content from this channel in the last few days and I have learned an awful lot of information. Uh, the gentleman, David, who uh, runs this channel, he's a uh, long sword instructor and he knows how to uh, use a lot of weapons. That's actually what he does. He teaches people and how to use um, these weapons, medieval weapons and, and combat styles. Now, David's latest video was exceptionally interesting because he was talking about dual wielding in Game of Thrones. Now, I know that you noble ones particularly enjoy historical education together with a bit of debunking and some techniques. I know that that's what you want. So I'm pretty sure you're going to uh, really appreciate this kind of video that he, that he made. Really, really well researched. And besides, David has got an interesting English accent and of course the name of the channel really gives that away but it's a nice London twain and I myself have, having spent quite a bit of time in the city I can immediately spot that. So he's got a moustache, occasionally drinks a cup of tea, what are you waiting for? Go there, support him and if you like his content consider subscribing to him as well. Now, if you are like me and you had to learn English as a second language, I suppose that you also had a problem with memorising words. Now, of course, um, that does not always happen, but sometimes, at least once in a linguistic journey, shall we call it, I think that every language student finds a problem with certain words. Now, these words may uh, vary, of course, depending on the subject and depending on the the language that you speak as a first language, in my case, Italian, but uh, it will happen eventually that one or couple of words that you're trying to memorize in order to increase your fluency and your overall ability to express yourself in a foreign language uh, might be difficult to remember, to memorize, to learn by heart. Now, incidentally, I was teaching an English class the other day, because as you know, I am a language teacher. I was teaching English the other day, and it, some of my students were experiencing problems and were presenting this problem about memorizing the days of the week. So pretty basic things that I think that we all go through when we learn another language. So some of the students were having problems remembering which day is Friday, and which day is Saturday, and so on. And, and then it came to me that I thought that it would be a good idea to actually study a little bit of uh, Germanic philology uh, in order to remember these days more easily and then considering that this lesson became really really interesting and my students utterly enjoyed it um, luckily and I'm very happy for that of course um, I thought to myself that considering the you community and you noble ones really enjoy a cultural and historical background information then I thought that it could be a good idea to share this video with you so this is what we're doing so the days of the week in English are strongly linked to Germanic deities and when I say ancient Germanic deities of course I mean ancient Germanic deity in this case specifically Norse deities. Now this might be something that some people know but for others it's not that obvious so to speak. For example let's begin from the most um, from the easiest one to spot Thursday. Now examining this word from a linguistic point of view we can immediately see that Day, of course, we know what that means, and the S is a possessive, or uh, which is sometimes also called a Saxon genitive. In modern day English, we normally put an apostrophe there, but here it's been fully incorporated within the uh, actual word. So, the day of Thor. Yes, the god of thunder. That is exactly the god that this day was named after. The hammer-wielding god associated with thunder, lightning, storms, oak trees, strength and the protection of mankind. The actual term stemming from a common Germanic thungras, which most likely meant thunder. 
Thor is a prominently mentioned god, not only in Norse mythology, for which now is quite famous, considering the, the Viking Age, etc., but also from Proto-Indo-European religion throughout the recorded history of Germanic peoples. So, having established that Thursday is actually the day of Thor, what about Wednesday? What god is that? Well, interestingly enough, if we uh, have a look at Proto-Germanic Anglo-Saxon, which we commonly call uh, Old English, and North mythology, it will be the day of Woden, or Woden, which is Odin. Now, it's interesting because in Old Norse, it was actually pronounced Odin, so more similar to modern-day English. But in Old English, or Anglo-Saxon, it will become Woden which came from Old Saxon, where it was pronounced Wardan. This god was mentioned throughout the whole Roman occupation of regions of Germania, through the tribal expansion to the Migration period, and the Viking Age. It's interesting because in Old Norse text, Odin is depicted as one-eyed and long-bearded, his weapons of choice being a spear named Gungnir, and wearing a cloak. So how did Wardan's day become Wednesday? Well, that is because if you look at the actual spelling of the word, when you say Wednesday, you're not actually pronouncing all the letters in there, because in Middle English, it was actually Wednesday, a lot closer to the actual God, but that pronunciation was simplified with time. Moving on to Tuesday, the day of Tyr. Tyr is a very interesting God, because it's a God that originally was considered to be the father of gods, but as in Norse mythology, but as Odin uh, gra gradually took his place, Tyr became the god of war. And that is interesting because the fact that it has to do with Tuesday, um, you have to consider this to be interesting because in Roman interpretatio, we have to consider that Tuesday, even in modern Italian, Martedì, becomes from the day of Mars, or Mars, the god of war. Well, we have to have a look at the lexical traces here because another possible spelling, particularly in Old English, for Tyr was indeed Tew with a W. So in this case, in Modern English, we only have a difference in spelling, but not pronunciation so much. So when we say God of War, we also have to say that it was most specifically linked with heroic glory and law. In late Icelandic Eddas, instead, Tyr is actually portrayed alternatively as the sun, of Odin. Moving on to Friday, the day of Frigg. Frigg, Odin's wife. Frigg was described to be the goddess associated with full knowledge and wisdom. Now, of course, if we compare Frigg with um, Odin and Thor, uh, she is less commonly known. Uh, the reason for that, though, is actually the Christianization that occurred in ancient Anglo-Saxon England and Scandinavia. But she will still be found in Scandinavian folklore. Monday, the day of the moon. Now, have you ever wondered this? Like, why don't they say actually moon day? Why Monday? Why did the pronunciation change and the spelling accordingly? Well, the thing is, of course, we don't have really much time to talk about the great vowel shift and all the uh, differences between modern English and ancient spelling. However, we will say that in this case, um, the word comes from the actual name of the goddess or god, uh, because it depends on what uh, source we're talking about or we're citing, so to speak, um, which has to do with the moon, in this case, money. So, money is the personification of the moon in Norse mythology. So, having said all this, what about some days and Saturday? Uh, these two names were very diff different in this case. Uh, as a matter of fact, they were not influenced by Norse mythology, but they were influenced by Latin and ultimately the Romans. Because we do have to consider that the Romans did conquer Britannia. Sunday comes from the Latin word dies solis, which means the day of the sun, which was the name of a pagan Roman holiday, as it were. Now, as far as Saturday was concerned, it was coming from the word Saturni dies, which meant the day of the god uh, Saturn. And this word appears to have influenced Old English and many other Low German, for example, and other uh, Germanic 
languages as early as the second century. So it was a calc of the Roman god Saturn. All right then, thank you very much for watching. I hope that you found this uh, video interesting. And before leaving you, I have a question for you. Out of all the gods that have influenced the name, uh, the names of the days of the week, which one would be your favourite? Thank you very much for watching. And remember that Metatron has spread his wings. Goodbye.